Hi, this is James with Thermal Battery Systems. Just thought I'd do a quick video while I'm waiting for the uh, oil to get changed in my truck. Um, I wanted to talk about air source heat pumps versus ground source heat pumps and the idea of a multi-source heat pump um, and that the current industry doesn't really even recognize the term multi-source heat pump. But the technology between an air source heat pump and a ground source heat pump is no different. Uh, they're both just uh, refrigeration cycles. There's a high side that uh, rejects energy out of it, a low side that absorbs energy into it, and all a heat pump is is a mechanical device that transfers energy from one place to another. So while it's conceded that insulation and a home with uh, low infiltration is the best money that can be spent to mitigate energy usage in the home, uh, because that's a passive infrastructure element. So depending on the variability of the weather conditions outside, the loads inside are moderated by the fact that it's well insulated and it's a tight house without a lot of wind blowing through. So that'll always be in there. It's a passive element. It moderates the conditions and thereby allows for less energy to be used. Now the next step is people then always look towards the efficiency of the devices that they use to heat their home. So they look at the mechanical components themselves and they decide if, uh, or they look at, you know, what is the efficiency of the furnace if it's 95% efficient or if it's a, uh, if it's an air source heat pump, they might look at the sear rating of it. And ground source heat pumps, of course, operate with uh, their own characteristics, higher efficiency than these things. But the interesting thing about it is, the only industry that has to pay attention to the source energy element is the ground source heat pump industry or geothermal industry because they actually have to design the source energy element. So whereas the furnace, uh, just you hook up the fuel line to it, it burns however much fuel it needs. So the efficiency in that case is embodied by the actual mechanical device. It has nothing to do really with the source energy, which would be the fuel that it burns. Um, the air source heat pump and the ground source heat pump both have to derive energy from somewhere or reject energy into a place. And so all heat pumps have a have two sides of an equation to have to figure out, a source side and a load side, or a, a loop side and a load side, depending on what you want to what terminology you wanted to use. But a thermal battery system and a multi-source heat pump is the idea that we can put infrastructure in that's not passive infrastructure like insulation would be. It's an active infrastructure element, but it's still infrastructure. The thermal battery is not a mechanical component itself. It's just a large thermal mass that can moderate the source energy conditions that the heat pump has to deal with. So the point is, is that because there's all this variability of source energy out there, that's why loads exist, is that we have, sorry, we're going to have uh, wind coming through here, um, is that we're going to have, uh, you know, really cold nights or really hot days. And to be able to mitigate those, the, the conditions that the heat pump has to operate in by using our environmental conditions, such as solar collectors or using fluid coolers at night to reject heat energy that was used uh, to cool the structure and was removed from the structure during the day. Uh, a thermal battery system is simply a, a, a passive or an active element of infrastructure that can be used with a heat pump and multiple other energy elements in order to better serve the energy loads of the structure. So I prefer to think about the multi-source heat pump in that way. It removes the idea of trying to say, well, does, does that work? Does the thermal battery system work? Well, there's nothing to work or not work about it. It is an active element of infrastructure that can be interacted with with other various forms of energy. And however many other forms you put into it or take out, how the thing is sized and configured, that determines whether it works or not, or how well it works, or how well you've mitigated the natural effects of the, uh, of the, the natural variability of the heating and cooling loads. So I just wanted to uh, talk for a little bit about that today, and um, this is James with Thermal Battery Systems. Thanks for watching.